Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today we have an interesting case from Missouri that the Eighth Circuit got all wrong. But let's not jump in and blame the Eighth Circuit right away because this would appear to be somebody not understanding that words mean something and that to a certain extent your lawyer should at least be reasonably literate and understand enough English to know when something doesn't pass the smell test. So let's get into this. So this is a 2022 case that was decided in September of this year from the United States Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. And it involves Mason Murphy, who is a, a private citizen, and Michael Schmidt, an officer in his individual capacity, and Jerry Pedego, the corporal in his individual capacity uh, of Camden County, Missouri. Those are the defendants. It was an appeal from the Western District Court in Jefferson City, and it was submitted back in January and wasn't decided until September. So here are the relevant, relevant facts. Officer Schmidt stopped Mason Murphy while Murphy was walking on the wrong side of a rural road. Murphy refused to identify himself, and the two men argued for a few minutes before Schmidt arrested Murphy. Murphy sued Schmidt for First Amendment retaliation. The district court granted Schmidt's motion to dismiss on qualified immunity. We affirm. Well, there are some pretty big problems with this. And the first of these is the uh, what I would call the ridiculous nature of the Eighth Circuit's determination here. Schmidt was patrolling a rural road. That's very important. When he saw Murphy walking along the right side, a Missouri statute requires pedestrians to walk only on the left side of the roadway or its shoulder facing traffic, which may approach from the opposite direction. And that's Missouri Revised Statute 300.405. Well, let's look at Missouri Revised Statute Section 300.405. So this is 300.405, and pay very close, close attention here to the words that are used. Where sidewalks are provided, it shall be unlawful for any person, any pedestrian, to walk along and upon an adjacent roadway. Okay, that doesn't apply here because there's no mention of a sidewalk and there's no mention of uh, any reason why he would be arrested for violating Section 1, which brings us to Section 2. Remember, this is a rural road. Where sidewalks are not provided, any pedestrian walking along and upon a highway shall, when practicable, walk only on the left side of the roadway or its shoulder-facing traffic, which may approach from the opposite direction. Okay, real quickly, let's see if you can determine what word is missing from Section 2 that is found in Section 1. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Tick-tock. All right. Well, the word is this word right here unlawful. So where it's unlawful to do something, the police can and probably should issue you a citation or, you know, be believe that, that you have committed some kind of offense against the state. But that word is nowhere in section two. It doesn't say that it shall be unlawful. It says they shall, when practicable, walk only on the left side. Well, there is no, absolutely nothing in this that says anything about the practicality or practicability of walking on the left side or the right side, whichever it was that he was walking on. And I think probably most people do this at some point in time in their life. They, instead of walking facing traffic, they walk perhaps for a short time with traffic at their back. Now, if you've ever seen somebody who's been hit by a car, for the most part, you don't do that. But a lot of people still do it, and sometimes I find myself doing it when I'm walking my dogs. But I live in a residential area where the speed limit is 25, so I can generally hear a car well before it gets to me. 
Hey, allow me to interrupt for just a second and ask you if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button. That lets YouTube know that this is a good video and they can recommend it to others. It helps me out a lot. Thanks. Now back to the opinion. Here is where Murphy's lawyer messed up. The parties agree Schmidt had probable cause to stop Murphy because Murphy was in violation of Missouri Revised Statutes 300.405. In order for him to have had probable cause, the deputy or the, or the police officer would have had to have shown that it was impracticable, that it wasn't practicable for him to walk along the side of the road. There was no showing of that. There was no attempt to even make that claim. So it certainly looks to me like this was not a valid stop. Basically, he stopped him because he thought he could get by with it, and he thought he would bully somebody around, make them give up their ID, they'd check him for warrants, and then if he didn't have warrants, he'd let him go. But that's not how the Constitution works. Whenever a police officer stops you, that is a Fourth Amendment detention. It ceases to be reasonable when there's no basis for it, and there was no basis for it here. He can't be in violation of Missouri Revised Statute 300.405 because it is aspirational. It is not mandatory. It says, when practicable, shall when practicable, and omits the key words from Section 1, it shall be unlawful. So even if he was not doing exactly as 300.45.2 said to do, walking in the right, on the right side of the road, you can't arrest him for it and you can't ticket him for it because it's not made unlawful by the statute. Now, this is a snippet from a case involving trespass, but it has a really important piece of law here, and that is Section 537.340 is a penal statute and must be strictly construed. What that means is, is that any time you have a penal statute, something that imposes a penalty on someone else, it shall be unlawful, for example. That penal statute has to be strictly construed. And that means that if there was not a sidewalk present and he wasn't busted for not walking on the sidewalk, you can't arrest him for that. What bothers me here is that nobody including the Eighth Circuit, apparently, actually read the statute. And, of course, the Eighth Circuit shouldn't have to read the statute because they're not advocates. They are people who, when presented with a series of facts, make a determination on the basis of those facts. Back to the opinion. Murphy refused to identify himself, so the police officer arrested him and arrested him for failure to identify. Now, nowhere here does the opinion actually address the statute that provides for the failure to identify. And I guess I should have pointed out that he arrested him, but he didn't have anything in mind to charge him with. He didn't know what to charge him with until he got back to the station and contacted someone else who told him that he could possibly uh, suggest that violated, he violated walking on the wrong side of the road and then they could use that as a basis to arrest him for failure to identify. So this is the Missouri Revised Statute 84710, Police Force, Officers of the State, Powers to Arrest. And essentially it says any police force is essentially, an, any police officer is essentially an agent of the state. And for that reason, he is, when he's acting in pursuant of his powers, he is to be, to be considered an officer of the state. And then it grants some rather broad powers of arrest. And inside those powers of arrest, it says this, they shall have the power to stop any person abroad whenever there is reasonable ground to suspect that he is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a crime and demand of him his name, address, business abroad, and whither he is going. Now, this links back to what we were just talking about. If it's not unlawful to walk on the right side of the road, 
when you're, you know, in basically to not do the aspirational thing that paragraph two says that you should do. If that's not unlawful, then he can't be, have committed or be about to commit an offense. In this particular instance, the, the Eighth Circuit got it all wrong. And here's why they got it all wrong. He arrested the man before he even knew what he was going to charge him with. He said he saw some uh, person walking down the highway and he would not identify himself. Schmidt then asked the unknown individual, what can I charge him with? Officers eventually identified Murphy with a credit card he was carrying and confirmed he had no outstanding warrants and released him. He was in jail for approximately two hours. And Murphy asserts he was arrested in retaliation for exercising his First Amendment right to argue with police. Star note, I think that's exactly what happened here. The district court granted the motion to dismiss based on qualified immunity, but here is the huge problem with that. You cannot have a reasonable suspicion that you are that someone is violating a statute <laughs> if you don't know the statute, if you don't haven't read the statute, if you don't understand the statute, and if you decide to charge him based on a later decision that hey, he was walking the wrong way on the sides of the street. That essentially turns the Fourth Amendment on its head. The Eighth Circuit got this wrong. Now, in Jefferson City, if this case had come to trial in Jefferson City with a Jefferson City jury, I doubt very seriously if Mr. M um, Mason, is it Mr. Murphy? I doubt very seriously if he would have gotten a dime. But not letting him get there is the problem that I see with this case. And I'd like to point out that over the last couple of days, as we've all seen, there's been a huge conflict in Israel, and people are dying over there. There are lots of organizations that do charitable work, and many of them go to conflict zones like the Gaza Strip and Israel to do that charitable work and to do medical charitable work like Doctors Without Borders. But if you are asked to donate to an entity like that, please be certain to check either GuideStar or Charity Navigator and find out how much of what they get in terms of donations actually goes to help people because many times you will be surprised to learn that it's not as much as you think it ought to be. So I personally plan to donate to some of these entities. I haven't picked one yet. But again, it's really important to remember that in any conflict, in any war, the first casualty of war is truth. So don't believe everything you read on either side of the conflict, no matter who you are pulling for or pulling against. That's what I have for you today. If you have the opportunity, do something nice, do something kind, perhaps donate to an entity that is helping people in Ukraine or in Israel or in Gaza that might do some good with healing people who are going to be broken by these conflicts. But Whatever you do, I hope you have a great day, and I hope you come down here tomorrow or the next day and join me, and we'll talk about something else interesting. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys. Thank you.